Void Kaisa is a beginner-friendly comp that is also surprisingly strong, and in this video, I'll teach you how to master this comp by going over the build, what items to build, which augments, legends, and portals to take, how to play the early, mid, and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is pretty linear, as we always want at least 6 Void in our team, but this comp gets a giant power spike at 8 Void, which means we will need a Void Emblem. This is easier to obtain than you'd think, as we'll get into later, but if we are not able to get the Emblem, then we will usually just end up with this board instead, where Kai'Sa is our main carry, Rift Herald is our main tank, and we're adding in Kisante for Bastion, and to be another threat, as well as Yasuo to give us 2 Challenger, which helps out Kai'Sa a ton. There are not really any other great variations that work unless we get some specific augments, and we'll get into that later in the video. Kaisa is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for her first. She has one core item, and that is Archangel Staff. Since the fights are quite long, she gets a ton of value from this item, as it will often give us closer to 100 AP on average per fight. The second item wants to be a healing item with either Hodge or Gumblade. Both of these work fine. Gumblade tends to be overall better, unless you have spell crit on Kai'Sa. In that case, Hodge is better, as it gives you more crit chance. The third item wants to be another AP item. This can be Jewel Gauntlet, Rageblade, Shine Slayer, Morello, Deathcap, or Guardbreaker. All of these are great, and you will usually slam whichever you can out of these. The most important thing though, is to get Archangels and a healing item on Kai'Sa first. After you have made Kai'Sa items, you want to make tank items. You will put these items on Belveth, Kisante, or Rek'Sai. The items you make are generic tank items, like Warmox, Bramble, Dragon's Claw, Redemption, Protector's Wow, Gargoyle Stoneplate, and Sunfire Cape. Kai'Sa items are the most important, so make any tank items you can that don't use components for Kai'Sa's carry items. If you get a spatula, you want to make Challenger Spat. This allows us to play 4 Challengers by dropping Kassante for Callista. But if you have the Void Emblem, then you can't really do anything, so instead we will just add in Callista at level 9 instead. The new Legend system allows us to pick a Legend before the game even starts. This makes sure we are always offered a set of augments at every point. With this comp, the number one priority is to obtain a Void Emblem, and also to make it to level 8 to hit Belveth for 8 Void. Therefore, the best Legend is Earth. This is because he gives us augments that provide us with emblems, and especially the Toma traits that we get from Ancient Archives has a high chance of giving us the Void Emblem. If not, then Aesil is the second best, as he provides us with augments that help us level up faster and get to level 8 in a safe manner. Let's quickly cover how Toma trait works, since you will often be offered this at stage 2-1 when you have Earth as your legend. When you open the Toma traits, you will get a set amount of tailored emblems. A tailored emblem is one of the traits on the side of your screen both the inactive and active traits count. Also keep in mind that it tracks the active and inactive traits from the last PvP round you fought. So if you have 5 active and inactive traits in total on stage 2-2, and you pop the tome on stage 2-3, then the tome will assume you have a total of 5 active and inactive traits, regardless of what it looks like on stage 2-3. The best time to pop the tome is when you have 8 or 9 traits, which will usually be at level 5 or 6, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read more about Toma traits. The best portals for this comp are anything that helps us get to level 8 faster, or gives us emblems to hit 8 void. The best one by far is Placidium Library, as it just straight up gives you the emblem. Even if we get more void emblems than we need, this allows us to drop the lower value units like Malzahar, which is great for our comp. Some other good portals to vote for when playing this comp are Yordle Portal, Scuttle Puddle, The Dreaming Pool, The University, Jace's Workshop, Targon Prime, and Ecliptic Volts. All these portals make it easier to get to level 8, or increases the chance of us hitting a void emblem. Moving on to the best augments for this comp, they are Bruiser Harder Emblem, Challenger Harder Emblem, Jeweled Lotus, Missing Link, Pandora's Items, Tiny Titans, Ancient Archives, Dedication, Defensive Dash, Library Card, Magic Wand, Medium or High End Shopping, Rift Walk, Stable Evolution, and Void Harder Emblem. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Missing Link, Pandora's Items, Ancient Archives, Dedication, Library Card, and Void Harder Emblem. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here is the quirky cheat sheet from a previous set, so you know what to expect for the Void Kaisa cheat sheet that is available right now. The best early game opener for this comp is to have 3 Void already on stage 2-1. This is not too hard, as both Cho'Gath and Malsahar are 1 costs, and Kassadin is a 2 cost. You will usually play a Sorcerer to be the item holder for Kaisa. Other openers that also work are 4 Sorcerers, 4 Bruisers, or Shirima Bruisers. 
We never really want to pre-level with this comp on stage 1-4, as we get a lot of power in the early game if we are able to hit Malzahar and Cho'Gath 2-star. And once we have found our comp, we need to make items. You always want to slam either Archangels, Hodge or Gunblade, as we know we need those items later. And those items are also pretty flexible, as they can go in a lot of other Sorcerer carries or Azir in the late game, in the case that we want to pivot. You can also slam any tank items that don't use up Rod or Tear. This is to make sure we don't disrupt Kai'Sa's core item, and you can place these tank items on either Cho'Gath, Kassadin or another tank you're running in the early game. From here, you can play the early game however you want in terms of streaking. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, then check out my guide where I go in-depth on that subject. At the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards a comp. The general requirements to play Void Kai'Sa is to have at least one component for Archangels and another component for one of our healing items. Additionally, we really want to have three Voids already, as Malzahar and Cho'Gath can be hard to hit at later levels. We also cannot be offered Void-specific Augments on Stage 3-2 if we don't have three Void active on Stage 3-1 so keep this in mind, as Void Heart and Void Crown are huge power spikes for this comp. If you are weak in the mid game, you should roll level 6 to stop the bleeding. We don't want to wait until level 7 with this comp, as our power spike is not very large there. When rolling at level 6, you're always looking for a 6 Void Board if you have the emblem, if not, you're looking for a 4 Sorcerer, 3 Void Board. During the mid game, it's also important to scout. This is so we can see how many other people are playing Void Kai'Sa, but if you see two other people going for it, then it might be better to pivot into another comp, like Sorcerer Lux or Sharima Azir. Once you get to stage 4-1, the late game begins. Here you will need to assess the situation, if you're going to be playing Void Kai'Sa or pivoting into another comp. If you need to roll down on stage 4-1 due to you being low in HP, then you should be open to pivoting to another comp while rolling, if you end up hitting a lot of champions for another AP comp. When playing Void Kai'Sa, we need to reach level 8, therefore we always want to fast 8 when we can, as we need Belveth to hit 8 Void. At level 7, we cannot reliably hit Belveth, therefore we will usually have to settle with 6 Void Kai'Sa or pivot into Sorcerer Lux or another AP comp. Once you've hit level 8, your final board will look like this if you got the emblem, and like this if you didn't get the emblem. And here, Kisante can be replaced with another Legendary. If you get plus 1 of any trait, your 8 Void board won't change at all until level 9, but if you are running 6 Void, our board can change. With plus 1 Challengers, we run 4 Challengers, and with plus 1 Bruisers, we run 4 Bruisers. Besides that, there is little we can change. If you are able to get to level 9, you will usually just add in another Legendary to round out your comp. The best ones are Scion, Kisante, Ahri, and Aatrox. General positioning with this comp looks like this. All you need to do here is to keep Kaisa safe from CC, as she will dash to safety with her spell. You want Yasuo to try to walk close to the enemy carries by keeping him on the sides. Keep Belwith on the second row so she doesn't take initial aggro, and use Malzahar and Velkas as farthest away CC bait. Baron can't move, so you always want him in the middle, to make sure he is actually tanking damage. Now moving on to some in-depth examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Azir and Nasus. Kisante can also cause some trouble if he locks onto our Kaisa, so we want to focus him down first to be sure. We do this by having all our main carries target him, and our carries are also placed on the opposite side of the Jarvan to avoid his CC. Yasuo is also on the same side as Azir to hopefully be able to get him within his spell range. Against the second guy, the big threat is Urgot and Aphilios. Yasuo is positioned on the right side to walk up and have Urgot and Lissandra within his ult range. From there, he can also ult Aphilios and take him out. Kaisa and Belwith are targeting the Taric first, as his spell blocks a lot of incoming damage on Sejuani and Shen. Against the third guy, the big threat is Zeri and Senna. Yasuo is on the far left, as he will walk to the T-Hex, and will ult down to the Zeri and Senna. Kassadin and Malsahar is baiting out Jarvan's ultimate. Kaisa and Belveth are on the opposite side of Jarvan to not get CC'd. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they're available for you to members and patrons, and the links to join those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.